Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to go over how to create a map chart in Excel and how to set it up so that you can also use slicers with it as well to break down data even further and narrow in on a specific region. So to do this, I'm going to walk you through step by step the, the process that I take after downloading data from the Bureau of Economic Analysis to pull in per capita personal income by county and then convert that into a table and then add slicers and create a map chart that will dynamically update based on my selections. Okay, so I'll send a link, I'll include a link in the description for this video and from there you'll, you'll find where you can download the same data set that I use for this in case you wanna follow along. Okay, so when you download it, when you download that data set, it'll look like this, where you've got the different uh, counties and the states and then the percentage change, all that sort of stuff. Um, for the purpose of this example, I'm just really gonna look at the 2019 values. But before I can really put this into a table and do any sort of analysis with this or put it into a chart, I'm gonna need to add, add a column here. So I'm gonna insert column. And the reason being is right now the state shows above the counties and that's not really helpful. I, I, I want the, the state value to show up here so that way it's easy and all the information is on, is on one row. So to do that, I'm gonna create a simple if formula. And what I'm gonna do is check, actually I'll do it in the row above. What I'm gonna do is check if the value above this cell is empty. If it is, I'm gonna take this value Otherwise, I'm gonna take the value from above. And so the reason I'm doing this is because the one pattern I noticed in this data set is that the state name um, above it usually is a blank cell. So that's one way I can check to make sure that that's actually the state name. And if there isn't a blank cell, then I'm just copying from above. So that way I'm just taking from the field directly above, which is what I wanna do. So if I copy all, this all the way down to the very bottom now, I'll have a column set up for, for the state and one for the county. Now I will still, I'm gonna delete these rows here at the bottom, but there's also some data that I'm gonna delete from this data set right now. Like I don't need this empty row. I don't need the United States. And, for, and one thing I wanna do before I cop, before I delete anything, copy this as values. So I select the entire column and then copy this value. So that way these formulas are gone and these values are now hard-coded. Hard so I'm gonna delete these two rows here. And what I'm also gonna to wanna to do is filter out the, the, the state names that just contain the state. And those ones I notice have two hyphens in the, in the rank column. So I'm gonna select that and filter out so that I'm only selecting I guess anything that is blanks as well, I'm not gonna want. So I'm gonna select all these values, hit Control-5 to copy, to select special, and I only want the visible cells to delete. So delete entire sheet row. And now I've cleaned up my data set, so now I only have, um, I only have the counties. And so I'm also gonna convert this back to a range because I wanna delete this first row here that it automatically created, okay? And then I wanna delete all these extra columns. You could include multiple years, but for the sake of just making this as simple as possible, I'm gonna delete all, all, of, all of this except for the state, the county, and I'm gonna say per capita income, okay? I'm just gonna turn off all the formatting, um, all the formatting on here. Okay, and then I'm gonna convert this into, go to the insert tab, insert a table. It's gonna automatically select my data. And yes, my table has headers, so I'm gonna hit okay. Now I've got a nice table set up here. What I'm gonna do is insert a few rows above this. And the reason I'm doing this is, you know, if you're creating a dashboard or doing any sort of report, it, it's often helpful to have the data set directly below any charts. And so what I'm gonna do here is freeze panes. And so now I'm gonna insert my map chart. And if you have, and if you're not sure if the version of Excel you're using has map charts, an easy way to check is on the insert tab. 
you'll see this map icon, this icon of a globe actually. So I'll click on this, hit filled map, and then what I'm gonna do is move it above here, move it above my, my table. And you'll notice now it's created a range of values from up to 229,000 to a low of 19,000. And then based on the shading, it tells you where a county falls within that range. So I'm gonna change this title to say per capita income, okay? And so, so now all that I really need to do from here is I can just insert a slicer. And so if I go to insert slicer for the state, I'm gonna hit okay. And now the really cool thing about this, this, maps, map, this map chart is it'll automatically update based on based on the data that you give it. So for instance, if I select California, it's gonna show me the, the different counties in California. I can hover over and see what that value is, what that county name is, just like you would with, with any other chart. If I switch over to Connecticut, now I'll see a breakdown of Connecticut. And below, I've got the per capita income based on, based on that state and its counties. If I wanna to go to Alabama, I can do that. And this is where freezing panes comes in handy because I can scroll down and easily see all the counties that make that up. If I wanna go back and view the US as a whole, I can clear out and now I've got everything. So that's a quick snapshot of how to create a map chart in, in Excel and how to set up slicers to go along with it. Um, the one thing you may want to note is that with this map chart, you, you won't be able to create it as a pivot chart. If you create a pivot table, you can't create a chart out of that, but you can create the chart by just creating a simple table. And so that's just one thing to, to note, because if, if you try to create a uh, pivot chart, you'll get an error message but doing it through a table will work just as well. And you can also do this if you're collecting data at the country level. So if you've got sales from all over the world and you wanna visualize where those are coming from, what countries are coming from, then you can plot country specific data. Um, but when you're looking at narrow views like counties or cities, you wanna leave a bit of a trail for, for Excel to know exactly what you're looking for. That's why. If I just included county here, this chart would look a lot different and, and probably not not correct, just because there's some counties that you know may have the same names, whether it's in the United States or names could be similar to other parts of the world, and so it would be hard for Excel to figure out what specific area or region you're talking about. And that's why, at a minimum, when you're looking at counties or cities, you'll want to include the state at least. Um, for countries, you probably won't need to do that um, just because they're countries. But when you're looking at more detailed levels, such as cities or, or counties, you will need to provide more information to, to make the map work as you expect it to. And like I said, it'll automatically adjust based, based on the region. Like if you look at the, the post that I'm gonna link to, I show an example of how, you know, if I only put data for three countries in North America, it's only gonna focus in on North America because that's the, the data that I've, that I've selected. If you select countries from all over the world, you'll get a view at the global level. So the really cool thing is this, this chart will automatically update based on the scope of data that you provide it. Um, so that's about it for map charts. Hope you found this video useful and you learned something. Thank you.